Hello all and thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight we'll be exploring a national historic site located out of Lewisburg on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia, Canada that stands as a one quarter partial reconstruction of an 18th century French defense and whose two major historic sieges, most prominently the siege that befell the fortification in 1758, are recognized as extremely influential turn points in the Anglo-French battle for the Canada we know today. Now an infinitely popular tourist destination and purported to house a number of restless spirits, are you ready to delve into the history and hauntings of the fortress of Lewisburg? Historically, land now holding the fortress initially played home to the native Mi'kmaq. Through the 1590s, European mariners would begin utilizing the harbor, and the French settlement of Ile Royale in the present Cape Breton Island would form through the early 17th century. In 1713, French military forces would establish a fortress and a seaport on the southwestern end of the harbor and would name them in honor of Louis XIV as Louisburg. Louisburg would play a critical role as the capital of Ile Royale and would maintain protection over the Grand Banks, which at the time were one of the wealthiest fishing grounds in the world. Sadly, in 1745, most of the settlement was burned on the first day the British landed at the siege of Louisburg, and eventually, relentless assault would force the French to abandon the Grand Battery, after which it would be occupied by British forces for a time, returned to the French in 1748 and captured by the British once more, following a six-week siege that resulted in French surrender in 1758. In the aftermath, in 1760, fortifications on site were demolished to prevent future use by the French, and in 1768, the British garrison was shut down. The fortress and town site left abandoned, with the exception of a humble civilian populace that stayed behind. Over the years, a small fishing village would form across the harbor from the old fort. This community grew steadily, welcoming in wanderers and those seeking to escape the brutality of the American Revolution. Following the construction of the second Lewisburg Lighthouse in 1842, the harbor would see increased traffic. In 1877, a railway was constructed to Lewisburg, but was eventually abandoned after a forest fire, and in 1894, the construction of the the Sydney and Lewisburg Railway would result in the transport of high volumes of coal to be exported from the harbor. In 1912, this very harbor would be utilized by the Canadian government ship Mon Menyi for resulting bodies from the RMS Titanic disaster. In 1920, the whole of the Lewisburg Expanse was designated a National Historic Site, and in 1961, the government would launch a $25 million project purposed to reconstruct around one quarter of the original town site and fortress, just as they would have been circa the roaring 1740s. This project would require the skill sets of various archaeologists, engineers, historians, and architects, would have dozens of parties working research over half a century, and when possible would utilize original stones and materials in the rebuilding process. Today, the Fortress of Lewisburg National Historic Site of Canada is operated by Parks Canada and remains open to the public, offering tours, period weapon demonstrations, puppet shows, and, according to legend, its fair share of supernatural activity, with both staff and visitors reporting disembodied voices and footsteps, objects spied moving on their own, and the feelings of being watched, stalked, or even of being touched by a presence unseen. The Dagon House hosts a purportedly haunted doll that local lore dictates if touched and not re-swaddled directly after will bring about a curse on whosoever did the touching, and a spectral woman in 18th century clothing has been sighted and heard wandering around the property, spouting out profanities, and has been known to disappear when confronted. At the old prison, a woman's tortured, disembodied shrieking has been heard. In the bakery, a malevolent presence has been known to throw things at visitors and move old machinery. And one tale of terror tells of a soldier who arrived at his post at 6am, only to find another soldier already standing there in his stead, that, when informed his shift was over, vanished into thin air. Following the uncovering of a grave of 42 soldiers during a storm, many frequenting Lewis 
Harrisburg begin reporting encounters with ghostly soldiers and shadowy figures, and a handful of informal investigations of the site have yielded high EMF levels, crystal clear EVPs, and the capturing in photography of full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the ages. Below the chapel lie five graves, one of which belongs to an unidentified child. And near, many have described the sounds of a child crying somewhere out of sight, of small footsteps skirting around through the darkness, and of a woman soothing singing in the early morning hours. Also reported around the fortress of Lewisburg are the disembodied cries of an infant, run-ins with a ghostly nurse usually seen crying into her hands, and encounters with a spectral sea captain in full garb, who's been known to appear to guests to warn them to stay away from the walls. On a chilling final note, at least 77 shipwrecks lie submerged under Lewisburg Harbor, one of the more infamous of which is the legendary Le Chameau, a French pay ship whose sinking in 1725 resulted in 316 fatalities. And across the expanse, both ghostly ships and phantom sailors have been known to materialize for moments, gliding silently through the waters or roaming the shores before disappearing into the night. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.